There's actually a new poll out from Gallup that I had to read multiple times to make sure that I was reading this correctly because it shows an incredible number of Americans have rejected the Democrats and embraced the Republicans just in this past year alone. I wanna dive into the very important implications of this in just a second. But first I wanna to talk to you about Echelon Fitness. Echelon Fitness brings the gym home to me which helps a lot. It also helps to have world-class instructors choreographing classes with music from your favorite artists and my favorite artists. And you get a community of hundreds of thousands of people who can give you that extra push that you need, that motivation. Echelon Fitness is the affordable way to get the workout equipment, the workout community, and an instructor's motivation right in the comfort and privacy of your own home. With Echelon Fitness, you can work out anytime, day or night, and crush your fitness goals. Fitness instructors are supportive, engaging, and fun. They really know how to get you moving. Echelon Fitness's full range of affordable workout equipment, including stationary bikes, smart rowers, sleek fitness screens, and the auto-folding treadmill are all connected to provide the Echelon Fitness experience. One membership covers a family of five, and right now, for a limited time, you can get a 650 dollars off MSRP. To get this exclusive podcast discount, my discount for you, text Liz to 818181. L-I-Z to 818181 to get a $650 off MSRP. Disclaimer, the message and data rates may apply to this. You can see the terms for details. You'll be glad you did this. Text Liz to 818181. Okay. So this Gallup poll that was released this week is quite something. It measured how many Americans were either Republican or leaned Republican in January of 2021, so one year ago, and how many were Democrat or leaned Democrats in that same time period, and then compared the same metric again in December. So January of 2021 to December of 2021. And these are this is the data. This is what this is what they found. In January of 2021, there were 40% of people who identified as Republican and 49% who identified as Democrat. That's a that's a big difference, right? 9 points difference between people who are on the left and people who are on the right. Well, fast forward to December of 2021, 47% of people identified as Republican compared to 42% of people who identified as Democrat. So, that is a 7-point switch on each metric. It went from 40% GOP in January to 47% GOP in December, 49% Democrat in January, dropping to 42% Democrat in December. I mean, th this is quite something. You can, you can see this, this graph from Axios on the screen for those of you who are watching this, for those of you who are listening, it is a, it is a graph that shows you know, the nosedive of people who identify as Democrat and this, this uphill climb of people who are identifying as Republican, and this is very significant given everything that happened in 2021. And I think instead of just, I, I've seen a lot of conservatives online who are posting this, who are cheering about this, who giving themselves a pat on the back, and that's fine. Credit where credit's due. I'm, I'm not against celebrating wins, but I think we really need to understand why this happened, because if we want this to continue, if we want to actually take back Congress later this year, the 2022 midterms, um, th then we need to make sure that we are continuing this trend. And what I mean by that is we don't wanna become complacent. We don't wanna count our, you know, count our chickens before the eggs hatch here. We wanna make sure that we know exactly what's causing people's minds to change and bringing people to the Republican Party and turning people off to the Democratic Party. Because if we can continue this trend, well, it's gonna be a blowout in November, which is what we want. We're gonna take back the House, we're gonna take back the Senate, we're gonna stop Joe Biden's, at least his legislative agenda until we can get a Republican president back in office in 2024. But some of the things that have happened this year are very important to identify because each and every one of us, especially elected officials, should be able to explain in under 30 minutes, just you know, by ticking off bullet points on your hand, exactly why people's people are changing their minds about whether they're a Democrat and Republican. And I, I, I think a perfect example of this is a ruling that happened in Wisconsin this week. A judge ruled in Wisconsin, and remember, President Trump lost Wisconsin by about 20,000 votes to Joe Biden in 2020. This was razor thin margins. This was very close. And there were allegations that laws were changed in Wisconsin about absentee ballots, about ballot harvesting, about drop boxes that were unmanned drop boxes. And there were allegations that these, these changes to these laws that happened before the election weren't done properly. That this was actually illegal to implement these practices without changing the law which wasn't changed. So a judge just this week ruled that in fact the law was broken. 
that there was no there was no authority to make these these practices to put these practices into practice to make these changes and this is a pretty this is a pretty significant thing and the reason this is significant obviously is because um the que- because of the questions this brings up if the law was violated in 2020 well how many votes were impacted we're talking as i said a margin of 20,000 votes how many votes were collected via ballot harvesting or via unmanned drop boxes that were then counted, but were were cast, I guess, in violation of the state law. And of course, why didn't these lawsuits proceed as they ought to have in the immediate aftermath of the 2020 election? But it, it does bring up the question. So there's a difference, by the way, in voter fraud where someone walks into the polling place and shows a fake ID or claims to be a person that they are not and fraudulently casts a single ballot in the name of somebody who they are not. That's just that's just textbook voter fraud. Well, then there's then there's invalid ballots. Invalid ballots aren't necessarily cast fraudulently, but they are tabulated or counted in an invalid way. And that I think is what we're dealing with. This this latter this latter thing, this latter issue. And it is a form of voter fraud, but it's more an invalid ballot issue. Because if you're not allowed to cast a ballot and drop it in a drop box, if you are, if election officials, I should say, are not allowed to collect ballots that are collected in a unmanned 24-hour drop box, or if ballot harvesting is illegal, if somebody else is not allowed to take your ballot to the polling place to be counted, then the counting of your ballots, even if the casting of the ballot was legal, the counting of the ballot was illegal. And therefore, that vote is most likely invalid. And so up in Waukesha County, a circuit court judge named Michael Bowren um, determined that there, quote, is no statutory authority to allow either of these practices, ballot harvesting or unmanned drop boxes, that happened in Wisconsin during the presidential election. And I mean, if you think about how many people used these practices, how many people dropped their ballots off of these ballot boxes, how many how many ballots were collected via ballot harvesting. Again, you have to ask the question, if this violated the law in 2020, and this judge says that it did, then how many votes were impacted? And were the number of votes impacted greater than the number of votes that President Trump lost to Joe Biden by in Wisconsin in the 2020 election? And the reason that this is important is so that we all, American citizens, can have confidence in our election system and the integrity of our voting institutions and in the integrity of our individual votes. But it also shows why so many Republicans have, or so many Democrats, I should say, have left the Democratic Party. And if they leaned left, why they're now leaning right. Because the Democrats, in the wake of the 2020 election, they ridiculed anyone who asked any of these questions. They branded you as a heretic, essentially, if you wanted answers, if you wanted any kind of analysis, they condemned the lawsuits. They have equated anybody who makes mention of the integrity of elections to an insurrectionist, which is patently absurd. And this turns people off because everyday American citizens are like, well, wait, what is the law? Does the law say that you can engage in ballot harvesting or is that against the law? Does the law say that you can have unmanned drop boxes or is that against the law? If it's against the law, then why did Democrats why did Democrats collect ballots in this way? Because the reason we have laws is because they protect our elections. The reason we have laws and don't violate them is because when you violate a law, it creates a vulnerability for questions and lack of confidence in these voting institutions. And again, the Democrat electorate, the upper echelons of the Democratic Party just completely ridiculed this and pushed many people who might have leaned left to leaning right, because it was the Republican Party who was willing to say, listen, we'll stand up for you. We'll stand up and protect the integrity of your vote. We will make sure that we secure the integrity of our election so you can have confidence that when someone wins an election, you know that it was a legitimate win and you don't feel like it was seized or stolen or shady or fishy or electioneered or anything, that you just know that that was the will of the people represented at the ballot box. And so I I, I saw this, this ruling this week and I thought, listen, This is one of the reasons why so many people are turned off by the Democrats as they should be. They should be turned off by the Democrats. The the other reason that Democrats are turned off, and this is, by the way, maybe even, even when I say more important, it's hard to compare the importance of two issues, but it's more extreme in this sense because the example that I just gave of not having confidence in the integrity of elections, my bet is that that brought in 
people who leaned left, maybe not ideologically hardcore leftists, but people who leaned left and kind of tilted them to leaning right. But this, 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 this next comment, this next attitude, this next narrative, this rhetoric from Joe Biden, which is not an isolated incident, this actually turns off very traditionally democratic, traditionally leftist demographics of voters. And of course, I'm talking about race here. I'm talking about Joe Biden's comments about MLK. And I'm going to show you this video in just a second. But first, I want to talk to you about American Hartford Gold. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed, by the way, everything is getting really, really expensive. We are in the biggest economic crisis since 2008. Consumer prices are the highest we've seen in 30 years. Inflation is seemingly here to stay. And if the government continues its out-of-control printing and spending, the dollar could continue its freefall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. So how do you protect your money, your retirement, and your savings? Well, American Hartford Gold can show you how to hedge your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. They'll even help move your existing IRA or 401k out of the volatile stock market into a precious metals IRA and they make it easy. They are the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. And if you call them right now, they will give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first qualifying order. So don't wait. Call them now. Call 855-768-1883. That's 855-768-1883. Or text Liz to 65532. Again, that's 855 768 1883 or text Liz, L I Z, to 65532. So this week was Martin Luther King Day, obviously. It was this past Monday. And to commemorate Martin Luther King, Joe Biden made perhaps the most horrendous comment, one of the most horrendous comments that he's ever made. You won't see this on the mainstream media. The left is not going to make a big deal about this because. It's Joe Biden, and he's exempt from all of their woke rules. But make no mistake, if a Republican dared to say anything like this, they would be, well, socially ostracized, canceled for sure. This is what Joe Biden said. Just listen to it for yourself. But even Dr. King's assassination did not have the worldwide impact that George Floyd's mm -hmm. death did. So here's what I will say in response to Joe Biden. I'm actually not going to contest what Joe Biden says. He, he's correct in a sense, but hear me out here. He's correct in a sense because after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., there were race riots across the country. The difference between now and then is that when there was looting, when there was arson, when there was rioting, when there was violence based on a racial divide, it was also universally acknowledged that this was wrong, that rioting is wrong that looting is wrong, that racial animosity has no place, racial divide, racism itself has no place in the American Republic, in the American heart. So fast forward to the death of George Floyd, and we experienced the same thing. We had race riots, Black Lives Matter riots, we had looting, we had arson, we had assault of police officers, we had racial animosity, racially divisive rhetoric, racially charged violence in the streets of, in the streets of our cities, billions of dollars of damage to, yes, even Black-owned businesses in the name of racial justice and George Floyd. The difference is that there was not universal condemnation of these riots. There was not universal condemnation of the violence, of the arson, of the looting, of the racially divisive rhetoric that was fueling it all. Not at all. In fact, the left justified that. The left accepted it and promoted it and encouraged it. And so if you think about the goal of the Biden administration, if you think about the ideological agenda of the radical left right now, which is not just an agenda of ignorance, um, it's, not, it's, it's not just an agenda of ignorance. And what I mean by that is if you, if you look at the, if you look at the Manhattan prosecutor, the DA in Manhattan, and how he's not going to prosecute anything unless it's a very violent crime. Even, by the way, if you commit a firearm offense, if there wasn't reasonable belief that there was going to be bodily harm um, inflicted on the other person, he's not, going to, he's not going to imprison you for that. It's not going to be prosecuted. And there's, there's questions among some conservatives of how did this disconnect happen between Democrats and reality? How are Democrats so ignorant of the consequences of their policies, the ramifications of the political policies that they support? And whenever this question is brought up, I say, oh, they're not ignorant. There's no disconnect. They're not naive. They, they don't lack self-awareness. They know exactly what they're doing. 
Democrats know exactly what they're doing. They're perfectly self-aware of the harm that's being inflicted on you and your family. The Democrats simply believe that the ends justify the means. That your harm, the harm, whether it's economic harm, whether it's harm to your rights, your constitutionally protected rights in the name of COVID, whether it's physical harm because of the violence in our cities, they think that the harm that you are suffering right now is worth it. They think it's a small price to pay because that harm is in the interest of tearing down the cultural, social, and governmental institutions that underpin our nation. And that is the ultimate goal of the left, is to tear down these institutions, whether it's the family, whether it's our criminal justice system, whether it's our public school system, whether it's the Senate, whether it's the Electoral College, whether, I mean, it, whether it's capitalism, whether it's democracy, our constitution, all of these institutions that make our country what it is, that's the ultimate goal of the left, is to tear down these institutions, because the ultimate goal of the left is to impose Marxism instead in our country. And so they're not ignorant. The Democrats aren't ignorant of the consequences of their policies, the harm that you are suffering as a result of their policies. They simply think that it's, that it's worth it. And so when you understand that, then you understand more what Joe Biden means when he said that the death of George Floyd was more impactful than the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. because the death of George Floyd begot race riots just like the assassination of MLK did. But the difference is that the race riots that were begot of the George Floyd death advanced this agenda of tearing down our criminal justice system, of demonizing capitalism, of branding, falsely branding anything left, anything to the right of socialism, to the right of communism as some, uh, some white supremacist institution that needs to be demolished. So when you're just thinking along the scale or the spectrum of Democrats advancing from where we are now, a free republic, to communism and socialism, totalitarianism, then yes, the George Floyd riots, the death of George Floyd was more impactful than Martin Luther King. But here's the thing, here's the thing. This was more impactful, but in, in, the, in the sense that Joe Biden is thinking in the context of his, of his ideological agenda here. But the American people are very turned off by this, as they should be, of course they are. People who lean left but are not Marxist or not communist or not socialist, maybe they're lifelong Democrats, maybe they come from a union family, maybe, you know, maybe they, maybe they are compassionate leftists, is what I would call it. People who think that the best way to love someone and help someone, care for some, is to have a big government program. When you and I know that that's maybe not the case, but it's not an ideologically leftist individual. Those people are turned off when their family is hurt and their business is is hurt, when the criminal justice system is undermined, when, when DAs are saying, well, if, if the gun didn't pose a realistic threat of harm, then we're not, gonna, we're not gonna prosecute that person. Leftists are turned off and they turn then towards the Republican Party because the Republican Party says, no, it's the responsibility of the government to enforce the laws to protect you and your family and your business and your community and your city and your country. And so seeing things like this, hearing things like this, this is why so many Democrats are now leaning to the right, are now, you know, why we see this, this graph with this drastic drop in Democrat support and this drastic growth in support for Republican policies. The same with that NBA owner. So that partial owner of the Golden State Warriors, uh, Chamath is his name, and he co-hosts a podcast. I don't know if you guys saw this video. He co-hosts a podcast called the All In Podcast. And on this podcast, he actually said, um, nobody cares. He was asked about how the NBA can do business with China given China's ethnic cleansing, their human rights abuse, their genocide of the Uyghur people. And this owner of the Golden State Warriors completely dismissed the human rights abuses and said, listen, nobody cares. Nobody cares at all about what's happening to the Uyghurs. And I mean, take a listen to this for yourself first. Yeah, nobody, cares about, no, 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 be, nobody cares about what's happening to the Uyghurs, okay? You, you bring it up because you really what? care. And I think what that's nice that cares? you care. The rest of us don't care. I'm just well, telling you a very care? hard... Wait, wait, I'm you're telling saying you, you very, personally don't care? I'm telling you a very hard, ugly truth, okay? Of all the things that I care about, yes, it is below my line. Okay? Oh, of all the things that I care about, it is below my line. Disappointing. I, I actually give kudos to the to the other to the co-host of this podcast because he gave 
the owner a chance to clarify like, whoa, are you sure you want to be saying this? Do you just mean that you don't think the general public cares about this issue or you personally don't care? But no, no, the owner doubled down and said, no, I don't care about it. And then not only do the, you know, the people, the American people not care about this, I personally, it falls low on my priority scale. And I just, when I saw this, I just thought to myself, my goodness, this is the most heartless man in our country. The most heartless man. Do you need to be reminded of what's happening what the Chinese Communist Party is doing to the Uyghur people, because we're not talking about religious persecution of this type that we see here in the United States. And I'm not trying to diminish, I'm not trying to diminish a Masterpiece Cake Shop or Jack Phillips and what he's suffered, that he has been legally targeted for the past 10 years because he didn't want to bake a cake for a gay wedding. That's awful, but this is a whole different ball game. What's happening to the Uyghur people, we're talking about women that are gang raped, we're talking about forced abortions. We're talking about forced marriages. We're talking about a religious people who are forced to recant their religious belief to actively violate by eating foods that violate their religious beliefs, violate their religion, violate their faith. We're talking about torture inflicted on these people. I mean, I, I don't wanna get too graphic here, but we're talking about organ harvesting. Organs are harvested from the Uyghur people by the Chinese Communist Party and sold on the black market in China. If that makes you nauseous, it's because it's disgusting that any human being with a soul cares about this. But the owner of the Golden State Warrior says he doesn't care about it. He actually compares his own political agenda. He said, well, we in the United States, who are we to be talking about this because we have um, abuses in the American prison system? Yeah, is that, really, is that really the same? Is there gang rape? Is there organ harvesting in the American prison system? I'm not, I'm not saying that there aren't always reforms and improvements that can be made to our country and to the institutions of our country, but really to make that comparison, like, oh no, America has historic wrongs, therefore we have no right to stand up when uh, the Communist Party of China is committing genocide against the Uyghur people. So this is another reason that Democrats are turned off or Democrats, voters are turned off by the Democrat establishment because the NBA is just an example of a corporate entity that has not only sold its soul, they sold their soul. The NBA sold their soul because they want to make money in the Chinese market. They want the NBA to make money in the Chinese market. They know if they speak out against the Chinese communists at all, that China will cancel them and they won't be able to make that money. So they've decided to sell their soul, which is a bad decision, sure. But it's worse than that because they're not just selling their own soul. They're selling the soul of all these hundreds of thousands of Uyghur people. And that turns off Democrat voters. It turns off Democrat voters to see these big leftist entities, whether it's Disney, whether it's the NBA, selling people out, ignoring human rights abuses in the name of profit, in the name of money, in the name of greed. And then you have the Republican Party that offers an alternative that says, no, we're gonna call out the Chinese Communist Party. We have a lot of economic power over China. We have leverage, we have a solution to this. We have things we can do because we're a decent people, because it matters what happens to people around the world. It's not just, all that matters is not just what's happening to ourselves. We're not that selfish of a people. But Democrat voters, see these Democrat off operatives, the Democrat corporations, these leftist corporations, and they're turned off by it. And so now you have people moving to the right. You have people moving further and further to the right. You also, of course, have the politicians that are offered by the left right now. I don't know if you guys saw this article in the Wall Street Journal. It's, it, it came out a few days ago. And I have read this article multiple times because it actually makes me laugh. It makes me laugh because of, actually, I want to I want to show you why it makes me laugh. But I, I want to talk first about trust and will. Trust and will. We all we all know that we need one, but most of us, if we're being honest with ourselves, put off creating a trust or will because it sounds complex. It's expensive. Maybe we're afraid of facing our own mortality. Who knows? Now it doesn't have to be such an issue. At trustandwill.com, setting up an estate plan is simple. It's convenient and it's secure. For as little as thirty nine dollars, you can nominate guardians for your children. You can determine who gets your stuff in the event of your death, and you can plan for future medical care all from the comfort of your own home. No longer do you have to hire a traditional estate attorney that costs thousands of dollars. We know that a one-size-fits-all approach is not necessarily what fits you best. Trust and will documents are designed by estate planning experts and customized for the state you live in, and they have customer support seven days a week. Their team is available to answer all your questions. Trust and Will is the most trusted name in online estate planning. So gain peace of mind at trustandwill.com slash Liz. If you use my URL, trustandwill.com slash Liz, you will get 10% off plus free shipping of your customized legal documents. So don't wait, go right now. This is really important. Get 10% off plus free shipping 
at trustandwill.com slash Liz. Trustandwill.com slash Liz. It's the right thing to do, the responsible thing to do. You'll be glad you did it. So this article from the Wall Street Journal is hilariously titled Hillary Clinton's 2024 election comeback. And the subtitle is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have become unpopular. It may be time for a change candidate. Well, yes, the change. When you think of a new, a fresh candidate for the Democratic Party, don't we all think of Hillary Clinton? That's the first name that pops to mind, the first face that pops to mind. Now, obviously, this is written by, this article is written by Douglas Schoen, who has been a Democratic strategist for decades. I mean, he's been around since before I was born and always highly tied in with the Clintons. So there's a little, a little, his opinion is biased. Let's just say that. But here's the funny part of this article. The funny part of this article is it starts by saying, a perfect storm in the Democratic Party is making a once unfathomable scenario plausible, a political comeback for Hillary Clinton in 2024. Several circumstances, President Biden's low approval rating, doubts over his capacity to run for re-election at 82 years old, Vice President Kamala Harris's unpopularity, and the absence of another strong Democrat to lead the ticket in 2024 have created a leadership vacuum in the party, which Mrs. Clinton viably could fill. Here's the funny part, though. She's already in an advantageous position to become the 2024 Democratic nominee. She is an experienced national figure who is younger than Mr. Biden and can offer a different approach from the disorganized and unpopular one the party is currently taking. My friends, listen to this. Understand what he's saying. He is arguing in favor of Hillary Clinton for one reason. She's younger than Joe Biden. That, that, I mean, when you're writing an article, you put your thesis at the top, your strongest argument in favor of whatever your agenda is. His strongest argument in favor of Hillary Clinton, he's presenting his primary argument. She's a little younger than the old guy that we've got right now. Maybe a few points less senile than old Uncle Joe over there who can't even remember which way he's going or what year it is. This is his primary argument. And this is the argument throughout the entire article. He's arguing that Hillary Clinton is the best just because Bill Clinton says publicly that Hillary Clinton would be a better president than he was. And she's younger than Joe Biden. This is another reason Democrats are turned off by the Democratic Party, because the Democratic Party is made up of corrupt politicians. Whether it's Biden and his ties to China and Hunter's corruption, whether it's Hillary Clinton, and good God, do we have to go back into Hillary Clinton's corruption? Her pay-to-play schemes, selling influence as Secretary of State, her emails, her unsecured email server, her lies, what she did in Haiti, what she did in Africa, the Clinton Foundation. This woman, if, if you had to have a definition, if you had a picture by a dictionary definition of corrupt politician, it would be Hillary's mug. It would be Hillary Clinton. That would be the definition. And people are tired of this. This is a nonpartisan issue. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat, people don't like corrupt politicians who lie. That's one of the reasons Hillary Clinton lost in 2016, because people didn't like her. Well, bring her back, says Douglas Schoen. Bring her back, says this editorial in the Wall Street Journal. Um, no, thank you. And Democrat voters are reacting to this by leaving the Democratic Party. The, the, the other thing, the other reason Democratic voters are leaving the Democratic Party and turning Republican is because of people like Leah Thomas. Now, I don't mean this with any personal animosity towards Leah Thomas. Leah Thomas is, of course, the transgender athlete at the University of Pennsylvania, born a biological male, competing as a woman, decimating the women's competition, destroying women's records left and right. And objectively, we can all see that this is completely unfair. You were born a biological male. You went through puberty as a biological male. You were a decent male swimmer until you suffered or said you suffered from gender dysphoria and now identify as a woman. After the only thing that this person has done is taken anti-testosterone or testosterone suppressing drugs for like a year or two. Clearly, Leah Thomas has a male advantage over the female competition. And the American people can see this. It doesn't matter if you're a leftist or uh, or if you're on the right, we all know that just objectively, just speaking objective truth, just speaking to the reality of the situation, that this is unfair. Yet the Democratic Party, the left, tells us that we have to accept Leah Thomas as a woman that is perfectly fair to biological women and that there's nothing, there's nothing to see here. This is an enormous turnoff to the American people. Even Michael Phelps, by the way, the greatest swimmer in the history of the sport of swimming, understands that this is a problem and said that athletes should compete on a even on an even playing field. Take a listen to this. I mean, look, like I, 
I'll say, you know, I, I can talk from a standpoint of, of doping. Um, you know, I, I don't think I've competed in a clean field in my entire career. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think this leads back to the organizing committees again, um, because it has to be a level playing field. I think that's something that, that we all need, um, because it's it, like that's what sports are. Uh, and, and for me, um, I, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know um, what's going to happen. Um, I, I believe that we all should feel comfortable with who we are in our own skin. Um, but I think sports should all be played at an even playing field. I don't know what that looks like in the future. Um, but it's, 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 it's hard. It, it, it's a really, it, I, I honestly, I, I don't know. It's what complicated. To say. Uh, it, it's very complicated. And, and, um, you know, this is, this is my sport. This has been my sport my whole entire career. Um, and, and I honestly, the one thing I would love is everybody to be able to compete on an even playing field. That's all I can say. Okay, so so I he he was very equivocal about this. This was not the strongest statement. I wish it was stronger. And here's what I would say. I when I first listened to this video, I was very torn between being excited that the greatest swimmer in the history of the sport said that you should compete on a on a fair playing field, which seems to indicate that he thinks it's unfair for a transgender swimmer, a transgender per, a transgender swimmer, a biological male who identifies as female to compete against biological females. And I was torn between that and between sort of the reverse position, meaning I wish that Michael Phelps had spoken out more strongly. I wish that he would just go up there and say, listen, this is no animosity towards Leah Thomas. I'm sorry that, you know, they're suffering, that this person is suffering what they're suffering, and I hope they get medical help. But objectively, this isn't fair and we shouldn't allow it. If Michael Phelps said that, it would change. It would change the sport of swimming. It would change the way that this is handled. It would protect women swimming. And so I was I was torn between these two reactions. And then I thought, well, why can't you have both reactions? This is a good start. This is a good start to hear Michael Phelps say he wants this person to be comfortable in who they are. And he also thinks that athletes should compete on an even, on a fair playing field. And he actually compared this to doping, which it is very similar to doping because the um, chemical balance in one's body determines, to a certain extent, the outcome of your achievement, the outcome of how much you're able to achieve in sports. And so I, I appreciate him saying that, but I also encourage him, Michael, listen, you have a platform like no other. You are a legend in the swimming world. There is not a single swimmer the world over who doesn't know who you are and what you've accomplished. You have a very powerful voice. You are in a position of influence. Women's swimming is incredibly important. Imagine what women's swimming will look like in five years, in 10 years, if it's been overtaken by biological men who suffer from gender dysphoria and identify as women. It will be, uh, women's swimming will be obsolete. Biological women will be obsolete. You have women, biological women who you've trained with, friends and teammates on the Olympic team who would not be teammates, who would not be champions, who would not be gold medalists if biological men are competing against them. So use your position of influence, use it well, speak out it, with compassion, sure, but speak out in defense of reality, please. This issue, my friends, is another issue. As the Democrats push this further and further left, as they reject objective truth, as they try to obscure reality and paint it as bigotry, Democrat voters are turned off and they move to the right because the right is saying, listen, no offense to this individual, no ill will towards this individual, no animosity, but we cannot destroy women in the name of being compassionate towards someone who suffers from gender dysphoria. So here we here we have, we're back where we started at this Gallup poll that shows seven a seven point drop in Democrat supporters and a seven point increase in Republican supporters from the beginning of the year, January of 2021 to the end of the year, December of 2021. Of course, there are other factors here. We have COVID authoritarianism and tyranny. We have critical race theory in public schools and Democrats in public schools saying that parents have no role here. Then of course we have these, these parental rights issues, this transgender issue. We have the crime that we see in cities. We have the corrupt politicians that we're talking about. We see the economic destruction, the, the inflation, the high cost of living that we're facing because of the decisions the Democrats have made in the interest of pushing their own agenda further and further to the left. Socialism and Marxism, ultimately communism, and this rightfully turns off the American people. The point of all of this is that we need to recognize, we need to acknowledge, and we need to be able to name exactly why there is this, this, this migration from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party. Because if we can name the reasons why, 
then we can continue to be the alternative. We can continue to offer the best policies that help the most people, that meet the needs of the electorate, of parents, of left, and, both on the left and the right, of voters on the left and the right. We can become the party that appeals to the most people. And if we're the party that appeals to the most people, just by standing strong in our principles, not by bending, not by caving, just by offering our principles as a solution to the problems that are facing the American people right now, then we will win in November of 2022. We'll take back the House, we'll take back the Senate, and we'll be able to stop Joe Biden's legislative agenda. And if we do that, then we won't have to sit here and wonder and wait, what's gonna happen? Are we gonna win? Are we gonna lose? We can take constructive action, each and every one of us, especially elected officials, we do have a Locals VIP of the Week. If we can cue the Vesta board to see the Locals VIP of the Week, it is New York Mom 789. New York Mom 789, welcome to the Liz Wheeler Show community. Um, please introduce yourself because I personally am very interested. You are a mom in New York. You are facing mask mandates in school. You are facing vaccine passports. Tell us about your experience. How do you survive? What do you do? Um, how are your children doing? Do you foresee yourself staying in New York? What is your life going to be like? As you know, over on the Liz Wheeler Show community on Locals, we are a vibrant community. There's a really fun poll that's happening right now. It's still live, so head on over there if you want to vote. If you had to pick between President Trump and Ron DeSantis as 2024 presidential Republican nominee, who would you pick? Go vote in that poll at lizwheelershow.com slash locals. New York Mom 789, welcome to the community. Again, anybody, please join us, lizwheelershow.com slash locals. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is The Liz Wheeler Show. The Liz Wheeler Show is produced by Jonathan Hay. Executive producer, Chad Abbott. Director of photography, Kevin McRoberts. Editor, Alejandro Figuerilla. Sound mixer, Robin Fenderson. Director of marketing, Emily Washler. Production and talent coordinator, Matt Toffler and senior publicist, Patricia Jackson. This has been a Soundfront production. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.